Hello and welcome to the first edition of DIY Do It Yourself, uh, where I'm going to be meeting and talking with other indie musicians uh, just about music, what they like about music, anything about music, and just about music. So my first guest is a dear friend of mine, and disclaimer, we have uh, worked together. He was nice enough to contribute on a couple of my releases. Uh, I don't play any guitar. He does much better. Um, and uh, I'll leave links to a lot of this stuff below, just as I'll leave links to his material. Um, I've got as my guest today, uh, John Mishy, and I hope I get it right. You're going to correct me, John, uh, from the John Mishy Collective. Uh, John had a really busy year last year, released two albums. Um, the first one was Good Vib uh, sorry, High Vibrations, and I'll ask him about that. Um, and the second one, which was a real left turn from it, um, was a completely um, instrumental record with a different vibe than the, the other one. We'll, di we'll discuss that. It's going to be a very far-ranging far conversation. So without further ado, I'm going to invite John in, and we're going to start. Hey, John. Uh -huh. Hello. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's, it's uh, Mickey. That's Mickey. Where... It, 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 I should have asked you before we started because I figured he's going to have one of these crazy English pronunciations to things where they eat half the the, the consonants. But... Yeah, no, it's, it's it's Scottish. Yeah, it's it's, oh, it's Scottish. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, you got to blame my father, haven't you? That's you know, <laughs> it's, it's my fault. Yeah, yeah. Him. Well, we're we're probably related somewhere because I think on the Holly side of uh of my family we're if i'm not mistaken we're border so it's either scott or on the english side you know up up actually around where you moved to yeah, prob probably up the roads by about an hour yeah. so. Some, somewhere in that somewhere in that area so Sorry, so sorry. anyway john let's uh let's start off with well let's start off in the beginning what was your first real recollection of music what was the first thing that really turned you on to wanting to be a musician well, if uh, they're two two separate things, like what my first recollection of music ever probably was um, um, Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds on on tape, and that that oola sound scare, scaring the hell out of me as a kid. Um, <laughs> but it, the, the thing that turns me on to actually wanting to pick up a guitar would be um, probably Oasis. Um, just because they, you know, it, they made the guitar cool, didn't they? After that that period of um, synthesizers and stuff in the eighties, that was a bit, you know, cheesy. Yeah. And um, all the men looking like Farrah Fawcett. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's just that that made me pick up a guitar. I don't sound particularly like Oasis, but that's what spurred the interest into um, getting to know different bands like um, Beatles. Um, Pink Floyd and so on. Um, I've got a cat tapping on the door. I might have to let the cat in. Is that well, go, go 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 and do that, and then we'll continue. <laughs> you warned us. Uh. <laughs> Come on. I'll just leave the door open so she can decide whether she wants in or out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at some at some point, we'll probably see a tail or a leg or. You know, yeah, they, yeah. They, they do love being the center of attention. Yeah, but I, I should have booted them out, but never mind. Oh, no, don't, don't worry about <laughs> it. It, it. This is this is going on YouTube, so it doesn't really matter. Every, listen, every, listen, there's some people that buy cats specifically to increase their numbers. Every, <laughs> so. every every interview, she's she's disrupted it. So um, yeah. It's well, what, what, what's her name? Uh, she's Yoko, and typically okay. she's a diva. So um, yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, but uh, so so that th that's interesting. Yeah, I, I I would disagree. I think that there you you do hear a bit of Oasis in your material, or it might be from the Ur source source of you you know of Oasis. Yeah, uh, which is the Beatles, of course. I mean, I think yeah. even they would admit that they were a big influence on them. He's a he's a, he's a magpie, Noel Gallagher, isn't he? It's like um, Stand by Me is Motley Hoop, all the young dudes. Um, uh, roll with it is status quo. Um, yeah, uh, you know it's all of those, um, all of these songs that he's done. He's he's nicked off different artists. 
um, like the the turning is uh, is Cliff Richard, you yeah. know. So he's he's lifting all of the greatest hits of his his um, of his record collection. I suppose it's pretty hard not to sound like them when he's nicked everything. So um, yeah, but well, I, I you know I think that that's a sign of good music in a sense. All, all that that shows, unless it's a it's a complete rip off, which mm-hmm. sometimes does happen. I find anyway is is it just shows good musical taste you know yeah. it shows what your influences were uh you know and and bad bad music usually shows what your influences were as well yeah well i, I think i think i think you, you you do you can't help it you do sound like your your influences but um if you can sound like you at the same time then you've you've sort of you've you've won it it's the it's the it's the people that sound oh, like really? uh, it's the people that sound exactly like a carbon copy of um say like the Beatles or something. That's where it's a bit Yeah. Why, why, why buy them when you can buy the original? You can, yeah, you can buy the original. And this is why I kinda don't get pop music because it, it just all sounds the same. Like why would you buy why would you buy the Backstreet Boys when they sound like Westlife, when they sound like Take That, when they sound like you know, it's just like you're just dressing up boys in I don't know, a pair of skinny jeans and going, um, here you go, girls. And um, they dance to a CD for half an hour. That's, that's all you're selling. Yeah. Um, but, but, I, but I mean, that's, there's been a long tradition of that that started yeah. probably with Frank Sinatra yeah. and went through the Beatles and all the way. And then, and then T-Rex was the other big one, right? Yeah. And, I mean, the market is 14-year-old girls. You know, they hit that certain age and, you know, it's it's all screaming. I don't even think they listen to the music, you know. No, well, um, if it makes the money, I'll definitely do it. So Simon Cowell, if you're listening, I'll, I'll put the <laughs> put the jeans on. I, need, I could do with a fiver. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I think in, in a pair of skinny jeans, you might look more like someone from the suite. Yeah, I, well, I, I probably could get away with it about seven years ago, but lockdown <laughs> ruined my physique. I'm now looking okay. like... I'm now looking like a fat Jim Morrison, so it's not. Um, it didn't. Do yeah, well, you, you 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 had that the opposite of me. I lost about fifty pounds. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny, but I found that most people was one or one way or the other. They they tended to go. They either put on some weight or like me, they lost some weight. So. Yes, yeah, it's, it's drinking in the house, isn't it? You don't. I wasn't walking to the pub anymore. I wasn't burning my calories. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, but. No, um, First, yeah, so, so so why don't we why don't we talk about your uh, your two albums last year? I mean the, the 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 first one high high vibrations was very much of a pop record. Um, yeah, a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah, um, that that was basically the result of um, struggling to learn and use my my Mac. Um, with uh logic and because i wanted to record music um and i thought you know it was if we go right back to the story it was me listening to grimes's album visions and learning that she'd made that album all on um garage band and i was like it's an incredible record so i thought i'd i wouldn't get garage band i'd get the the model up so i got um logic and i spent probably about three years banging my head trying to work out how to make that sound decent and when you you know this from making music mm-hmm. when you're making music you listen to the same what you're doing a billion times and you think it sounds great and then you give it to your, your mate and they go this, this is terrible you can't hear the bass you know where you know you can't hear yeah. anything you know, there's, there's hissing here there's some, there's some synth making a screeching noise and you can't hear any of it so um i i had three years of just struggling with different songs recording and um basically i just bought some um plugins in the end some isotope plugins and that cleaned up because i i I can't mix at all unless i've got help that cleaned up all these songs and i thought well okay they sound they sound all right now um and i thought well i want to i want to do an album so i basically just shuffle played them until i whittled them down to the the ones that were on there plus a couple that i made whilst i was making let me ears rest so I could master it. Um, so that's high vibrations and all the B sides, and I've still got a few projects left over from that um, stuck on my hard drive, which 
you know whether they'll see the light of day i do not know but um yeah it's just basically me making guitar music and um yeah. you know all that type of thing i'm just going to shut the door now okay one second okay yeah yeah take your time I think I've got to start scripting things for these kind of moments. Will you be Will you be editing all of that out, will you? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I might just leave it in. It's not. Yeah, you know, right. but, um, it's, it's one. It's one of. It's one of these things. That I think that uh, the integrity of the stuff. I mean, if we'd had a, a a time slot that would have made more sense to release the nine in the well, it's it's well, it's probably bad for both the UK and Canada. You yeah. know. Uh, I probably would have just said, let's do it live, which maybe yeah. we'll, we'll do on the next time. But it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. No. Um, what what possessed you to to put out the other album, the um, Toward a Rainbow? Because that, thought, that's a big departure. It's it's interesting because I think we both started doing instrumental music at around the same time. I just hadn't, I haven't released anything as an album. Yeah, I, well, I I I I just done um, released high vibrations and the result of all of those songs that i'd whittled down into uh, something that sounded okay together and I'd, I'd learned the whole process of making an album and i was just incredibly burnt out and i think of this not having a computer has um helped me because i feel like i want to make music again but i was burnt out and i was just like trying to do something different and just before my computer eventually kicked the can um i started reading up on um what uh brian brian eno did which is um using a script to program in logic because he records in logic and um i just thought okay let's give this a go see, see what he's banging on about because I'd, I'd never learned this script to program before and i thought well it's something that's going to advance my production skills something i can learn um and I literally in a day made about I made the album all of the yeah. pieces of music in there you hear then the next day I thought well how can I make this stuff sound um different so I was like I was slowing stuff down and then recording more stuff on it or I was reversing the whole tracks on some pieces and then put an echo one way and then reversing it back the other way and then put an echo going the other way so mm -hmm. it just all merged into a, a noise I was just basically doing um, some of the stuff that he was is it, he does do on records, um, and I had fourteen songs, and I thought, "Oh, screw it! I'm just going to cut them up, master them, get them stuck up on the internet, and then that's the uh, you know if people like it, they like it. If they don't, yeah. they don't." But I, one of the other thoughts behind it was, so many people have said to me, oh, "I've got." I've just recorded this country and western song, or I've just recorded this drum and bass track, and I don't know whether to release it under my under my, you know, your, the name that you release music in. I yeah. just thought, well, just you know, just shove it up. So it's been sort of like a deliberate attempt by me to not be pigeonholed into I make one sort of music. I'm going to be guitar driven. I'm going to, you know. I don't want to be like one of these. I call it like a um, a diet oasis um, yeah. bands where you just sound you make the same stuff all the time. Yeah, well, um, that was that was the death of them, wasn't it? Because I mean, they put out a couple of great records, and then it's just like, well, wait a second, this is yeah. that same song again, you know? And it's not it's not been improved. <laughs> if anything, it's it's just longer or whatever. Yeah. But, so. My, my, I think sort of if if there's ever going to be a strategy for me, it'll be a conventional album, something weird next, and then just keep on rotating and yeah. oh, bloody. Cast. Well, you could also pull a Bowie and do one side, one side, like you did yeah. with Low, you know. Yeah, or, or with Heroes, Heroes, with Heroes, stuff. yeah. Um, Which were both really interesting albums for it. Yeah. You know. I'm I'm gonna put the cat out, okay? So it's not tapping on my door. All right, so you might have to cut this bit out. I'll be okay. I'll, I'll cut I'll cut this part out. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting story because I uh, yep. 
here I'll go I'll go like this and I'll bring bring John back in when he's sitting down again. So oh, there we go. Oh no no it's no problem. No, it's the other cat. I've got two bloody cats. This, one, is this one is this one John? No, this this one's Luna. She won't she won't cause any. It's not like the other one, Yoko. Yoko's a not bag, but yeah, uh, wherever she is, I have to go the other way. She's over here. She's over here. Yes. Can you see are the they cat? are they both? They both look like they're they're Persians or at least long haired. Um. Yeah. Too much haired. Yeah. They, I, I just you know I got 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 them their sisters, but um, that's chalk and cheese. Um. One yeah. of them. One of them does appear on one of my records. Um. So. But um, yeah, no. T- toward the rainbow, it's just basically me, me sticking up a record and going, "There you go." This, you, you, I'm not yeah. going to be pigeonholed. I'm going to do what I want. Um, and then, what what's the reaction been like? Uh, well, I'll tell you my reaction. I I I first when I recorded it and stuck it up, I went, "This is genius!" Like, you know, how how have I done this in three days? Like, it's just brilliant. Even even the artwork I did like in like two minutes. Didn't care. Um, then I sent it to like. Luca on the internet and Chris and Genetic Effects and uh, whose real name's Dan and they were like makes me feel nervous when I'm listening to this. Okay. I thought well, I was still still shoving it up. Um and um then I listened to it once it was up and I thought this is utter rubbish. What have I done here? Like you know what was I drinking that day? Um and I've not listened to it until recently and I listened to it again and thought well, actually it is pretty good so I I like it I think yeah. I think I can listen to that more than what I can listen to my first record because I think I've listened to my first record that many times making it I'm just like it's... people say well, I, people... yeah I say yeah I, I find that you have to take ear breaks at some point in the process otherwise you just get too close to it too yeah, close was, to the work it's like people people buy it. Like I made a band camp sale the other day. They're going, oh, it's brilliant. I'm listening to this song. I'm thinking, oh, okay. I'm just thinking, like, how can you listen to that? It's like I'm so boring. But um, do you yeah. know what? Before before you um, before I logged onto the internet with you, I I stuck my headphones in and uh, hit play on Apple Music for my music in my library. And I was thinking, this sounds utter rubbish. What have I done? You know, like my voice. I uh, see, you know. Yeah. Um, I didn't realise that I'd hit like slightly slower speeds on playback, so I'm like singing like, blah, 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 and I'm thinking, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually thinking that's the record I'm stuck up. Oh god, yeah, no, but it's uh, yeah, it's it, it's listen days like that when when I'm working on stuff and I have that reaction, my I've I've gotten smart enough that what I do now is I just shut down the system and say today I'm not doing it. Yeah, because my yeah. my ears are just not you know they're oh, they're not attuned to be doing that today. Or you do something completely different, like doing you know like like because I I also as with you I did the sort of ambient stuff, also very Eno influenced because it yes he has been one of my biggest influence influences musically. Well, I, I, I downloaded that program as well, so I've I've got it. It's a great program. Well, there's two of them. Uh, but what I what I did with them and and you know and I found it worked really well is I did those little random things and let it run and you can you can basically record it straight into your system, which mm. is what I was doing right direct recording it, um, just with with a little cable you know what I mean, mm. and and then and then I'd edit it like because I'd find it's very similar to my my pro I use the same process I've done with a lot of my other music because I don't really play an instrument I can pluck out chords on a keyboard but that's about it and uh so I'd just edit little bits that I found interesting and start constructing the song from that with all the washes and all the beds because it's great for that kind of stuff Hmm. uh and then put effects on it and you know and came up with something also all with the idea that I don't want it to be too melodic because then you're, you know what I mean? It becomes a song again and mm-hmm. it sort of defeats the point of ambient, but there has to be that, there has to be a little bit of interest. Otherwise it's just noise. It's just background noise. Yeah. You know, and I've, I found the best of the ambient pieces from Eno are very much like that. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. I, I love the first ambient record he did, uh, discreet music. I think that's probably the best for me of, of all of them. But 
he was he was first on that with um, another green world though. You could hear when he released that that he was gonna move moving that way. Yeah, yeah. You, you could hear it in that because like yeah. I, I came off the back of taking Tiger Mountain and um, mm-hmm. also a great record. I, I I like his pop stuff. His pop stuff is just phenomenal. Mm. You know, from from uh, here come the warm jets, which yeah, is, that's I, I love that record. <laughs> that's a great pop record. You know, it, it's it's probably. For for me, it's it's the, the 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 least known or respected of that whole period, and it's it's one of the best ones. Mm. You know, uh, taking Tiger Mountain is great too, um, and another Green World is is really a good record. Although the one thing I have to say I never really liked is, is are his sort of barber shop songs. You know, yeah. like the, the the singy singy songy ones, mm. they, because they're just they're a little bit too cheesy. And it's too bad because he's a good singer, you know. You yeah. shouldn't. But anyway, you know, everyone everyone has their things that they like and that that that, that other people don't like. But uh, anyway, yeah. Well, I, I, I saw Paul Weller last night, and I was some of the songs I was thinking like, oh, what, are you, utter rubbish. But you know, it's it's the whole catalog, isn't it? Like he at least he's got a catalog where, you know, Brian Eno's got stuff that is broad. It's everything yeah. from, you know, yeah. to rock and roll to like. Really, like the Frippin' Eno stuff is like that stuff's pretty interesting too. Yeah. Have, have you have you have you thought of uh, setting up a Frippatronic system and uh, and playing around with that with guitar? Um. Well, that, because I, I think they even produce them now or something yeah. similar, right? Like the, a, if yeah, well, I'm I'm going to keep on buying stuff and acquiring onto the system. So yeah, that that would. You know, I, I want to get some of these even tied de- delays as well that he was using on Heroes with um, what's his face? Can't remember his name now. The uh, the other guy, uh, who uh, Visconti. That's it. Yeah, Visconti. Yeah. So I want to get um, I want to get. So I just want to keep on getting that type of equipment. So yeah, it probably will be on the shopping list at some point. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, we we should we should at some point discuss doing uh doing a collaboration of Andy. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I'm 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 sort of no 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 yeah I'm just saying I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I I, I, I I find I find that what's interesting with collaborating is it gets you out of rut and it you know it, it sort of fills in areas that you're you're weak weak on and it also changes changes the dynamics of songs too I I just don't enjoy them if honest I just I, just, I don't enjoy collab collaboration really? okay no, Fair um, I've um. The, co- the collabs I've done, like I've I've done some stuff for you, but the, all the other stuff I've done has been, uh, I've had minimal um, input. I just chucked like James Willow's a, a demo, and um, he finished it. It's like, well, I did I didn't do anything there. I couldn't sing the couldn't sing the song, couldn't finish it. So I just went, you do it. Yeah. And then I released it under my thing. Another one was he, he had the same thing with his song, which was uh, Assault the High Moon. He just said like. I can't, I can't finish it. So I just, all I did is mixed it, but I did, I did it differently to what he was doing. So, um, mm-hmm. uh, and then the other stuff I've done with uh, Luca, Luca's really good to collab with because he just goes um, 140 beats per minute, play anything for a minute. Mm-hmm. And you, you just play anything for a minute and you, uh, you, you literally sit here for a minute, do that. And then you send it off to him and you walk out of the room and he sends back the song the next day, and it sounds it's gone from, I don't know, me on an acoustic guitar, or me, you know, and it's it's come back as like drum and bass, and I'm just thinking, well, it, wow, and that's it. I, I don't have any more involvement in it, but um, I just don't enjoy, don't just don't enjoy it. No, really, fair enough. Really don't enjoy it. It's, um, I've had other people ask me to do collaborations, and one was when my computer was literally died bless the poor bloke he asked me to to do it but that that was a nightmare because i said can i do this one section of the song i said all right i'll do it if i if i can control the the drums and the guitar and um he said yeah that's fine it's fine yeah absolutely you can have you know and um so i uh i did my bit on the drums and the guitar and he's like i don't like it and i was like oh you, you just said you said i could do what i wanted there and it's just like oh, it turned into hell, but thankfully my computer died, so that that never happened. But um, yeah, I, I I can't do any music until 
I buy this new legendary computer that Max Apple's released anyway. So, and what 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 are you going to be getting? The um, Mac Studio, um, which is supposedly as powerful as the world's most powerful supercomputer from two thousand and like four or something, or two two thousand and two. Okay, but it's 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 basically if you if you own that, you've got anything is powerful in any recording studio, supposedly. If you if you believe the, um, the hype, yeah, if you believe the hype, but um. Once I've done that, I've obviously got about a, a week of installing software, that that boring thing, and then I've got like another probably month of going because I, when I was telling you that story about me listening to my singing on Apple Music before, it's because I've not sang or listened to anything or recorded any music or played any instrument since like November, so wow. I was like, I don't, I don't know what I sound like anymore. So it, I was just thinking, do I really sound? Do I really sound that bad? So um, yeah, I, when I when I buy this computer, I've probably I've probably got like a six to eight month wait, no six to eight week wait before it arrives. Then I've got all of that installing, and I've got it's just gonna, I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if I'm not recording until the end of the year. If, wow. if, 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 honestly, because it's just like I've yeah. And and how, how much how much is the system going to cost? The the basic unit is two grand. It's and two, that's, two, that's two in pounds. And it'd be dollars for you, or whatever. Well, the Canadian dollars is about yeah. seventy-five cents U.S. something like that. Yeah, so it's about two thousand uh, dollars in the USA. Yeah, so it's so, probably it'd be about three thousand here. That's not that bad. Yeah, but um, that's for the the bottom spec. Yeah. Uh, model, and I'm going for. The, there's two chips. You have got the M1 and the M1 Ultra, and I'm going to go the M1 Max. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. go M1 Max, highest gigabyte. Um, memory it's got because after having because my computer when I bought it wasn't for music production it was for me doing work when I was a teacher doing mm -hmm. so it wasn't it wasn't supposed to have logic installed on it yeah. by the time I started making music it was about seven years old so uh, I don't mm -hmm. want I don't want any of the software crashes or anything that I've been because it's just been hell yeah it, you know no, I'm I'm facing similar situations and deciding what I, what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was running into storage issues and then ended up, I mean, the thing I dislike about Macs the most, um, and I, I love them for music because I tried doing it on PC before I had both systems and it was a disaster just getting sound without lags and all kinds of just basic issues, mm -hmm. um, which you know, you don't have with Macs is I absolutely hate the Mac filing system. The yeah. way the way the files work, yeah. and yeah. with okay. me, I ended up by mistake literally erasing all of my last album that I was working on, mm. and then spent a couple hundred dollars tracking things down from you know bits and pieces that hadn't been overwritten on the system, um, and now I've got a bunch of files that are all unnamed. I don't know what I still have, what I don't have. Luckily. I was at the stage, I, I was I was at the same time mastering. So mm -hmm. as I finished songs that have like basic demo masters that I'd work from, right? Uh, you know, so I have all that. And I, in some cases, I'm just like, I'm working with Bob with uh, Rebel Tramp, right? He's, mm -hmm. he's actually doing I, I, work. I, I, yeah, I, well, I, yeah, no, I know we, you met him. In, in yeah, he's, 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 a good, he's a good chap, he is. Yeah, no, he's a really, really yeah. nice guy. And, and we're, we're just working. He's just providing me with guitar, guitar work on the phone, mm -hmm. right? I'll, I'll send him basically a finished song and, or a half-finished song. And, you know, there's a solo section here. Well, that's similar to what I did with you. And he's, he'll he's provide me with some guitars, and I'll, I'll mix, them, mix them down and into the song. So with some of the stuff, I'm doing it that way. But there's songs that weren't that far along. And I literally, I mean, it, it for me, it, it's awful because when I write a song, I started marking down the chord progression on the song title and I've lost all of that, too, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like, oh, my God. So it's almost I'm going to have to pick to figure out how to redo sections and redo them. And it's just not my, you know, I, I don't it's not the way I work because I, I, I don't really play anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm very basic on that. It's all my ear and and fiddling around in MIDI or fiddling around with, with 
with tape, right? With, with mm -hmm. little pieces of music that you put together. Uh, but yeah, and, and I mean, that being said, I have to get a new system because at this point, half the time with songs is you, you get, you, you get all kinds of effects and isotope is, oh my God, thank you. You were the ones who recommended it to me. Yes, and it is, it's what sort of my life. A whole, it's a whole new world, right? Mm. Uh, but the thing is, is it does take a little bit of resources, especially when you're running 30 tracks with, mm -hmm. you know, with Neutron. Uh, and I, I'm to the point now where I'll, I'll get to a certain point. It starts lagging. I export everything as finished tracks, which is not, something I actually learned. It was a Tony Visconti and David Bowie trick, right? Mm -hmm. Um was that what what they did and what I do is like when you start running into issues, you lock it down, and then all it is is an audio file, and it doesn't take that much mm -hmm. computing space, right? And it's it's good because it disciplines you that you can't change it. Mm -hmm. You know which what is, I mean? So that's, that's not the way which, I work. It's well, see, but that, that's that's the way I find I worked, and it's good because it force it it, it forces you to make decisions during the process rather than constantly being able to move them and change them around. I mean, I, I can add effects on it. I can do this and that, but it, it becomes a big def, a big effort to make a bigger change. Mm -hmm. Like I'd have to go back to the, the original track that I've now turned off, get it back into the, the mix and then re, redo it type thing, yeah. you know? But it's interesting. Everyone's got diff, different methods yeah. of working, I, right? I, I was locking tracks. I was bouncing things in place. Mm. everything that i hadn't done with my first record just to try and get it to work and um it got to the stage where um basically the computer couldn't handle anything more than four tracks on at once so like the logic drummer um and i was having to bounce together like all of the guitar parts together mm -hmm. uh, just to get it in and it, it was just becoming and even then it still wouldn't play ball with me and then I started having an issue where um, latency, everything had to be corrected. And for some reason, all of the in-time bits that I'd put in place because the latency then started snapping out of place. And I just thought, I'm, I'm not, oh I, can't, my I, can't, I, I can't use the machine. So, yeah, I've not made any. Yeah, loads of fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so when, I, when I get the new computer, I'm just literally going to, get my software installed and I'm going to open up the original projects and I'm going to start from the beginning and record everything. So I've got a lot of, a lot of work to do um, yeah. because what I've got is, is effectively demos. I've got nothing I can work from um, yeah. apart from it's, it sounded like this. So I've just got to start again. So I've got, yeah, I've, I've probably got well over a year's worth of work just to, you know, just to get anything near, near it could be released it's just a nightmare wow. but it's it is what it is i you know if you know if if i had loads of money this wouldn't have been an issue because you'd have the computer you'd you know yeah. you'd have you'd have all these things but as indies we don't have unlimited resources and it's a case of just constantly working around working on the weak spots of the equipment so like my album was completed my first album i need a new mic so i've got a new mic Mm -hmm. um, improving the guitars because of inflation now they're all going rocketing in value like this 400 pounds gone on the les paul standard since october um if you don't buy these things then you're never going to have them yeah i need a new interface so that's once i've got the new computer i might still not might be able to record because what i'm talking to you through at the moment um it ain't good enough anymore so it's just chasing rounds, trying to yeah. solve your, solve your hardware problems all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I, I I don't I don't know. I, I find myself I've gotten really creative because mm. I'm extremely low budget. You know, mm. I've got a, I've got a reasonably good microphone, which is a USB microphone, so I can plug it directly in. Never had a problem with it. I don't I don't own a digital interface. Mm -hmm. Uh, because anything else, I can literally bring it in through MIDI. Yeah. Or uh, I, I use this great little, like a lot of my sort of more electronic stuff, 
mm-hmm. is most of the sounds are sourced from this program, this free program called Figure, which is like a musical sketch pad type thing. Um, and all the, the sounds are uh, propeller head. So, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, I know them, yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're really good sounds, you know what I mean? Like the actual quality of, the, of all the sounds. And what it is, is it's like the little thing you have three sections, uh, a lead, a bass, and percussion, and the mm-hmm. drums is broken down into four tracks. So you, you have six tracks to deal with. Um, and, you know, and they, they run in loops that I think it goes up to, what is it, four bars or eight bars? Length. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff, what I was doing was just like plugging it directly, the sort of, uh, you know, headphones out from my my ma- from my iPad, direct directly into the system, mm-hmm. and just recording it, right? Yeah. And then once it was in, syncing it if there were any time issues. Although, although there's a great little program that I had on my iPad that I was using to record. And that would do all the syncing, like it would sync with the like with figures and stuff through mm-hmm. audio bus. So you know, so I could get it all synced in, and then you just transfer over all the files, and well, there those are all the original files, and you start screwing around with. Them, mm-hmm. You know, uh, so so my system is just like I I paid as I've spent as little money as I can. My you know my monitors are a pair of good speakers in my old uh, receiver. And, you know, the sound in and out through the computer, through the jack. My biggest problem with my next computer is I'm probably not going to have any, like a headphone jack anymore. Yeah. Because that's becoming a real issue. This is where you're going to need an interface. And then I'm probably, well, I'll probably have to buy one with my next computer specifically for that reason, because I won't be able to get anything in and out without one. Yeah. And and I'm going to lose, and I'm going to lose a USB jack. Well, it's, it's like the, the the reason I'll have to change my interface is because the, the new Macs don't have USB anymore. So you need, like, the lightning. Oh, things. my God. And those are the worst. So, yeah. So, um, or whatever it is, you know, the USB-C or whatever, they, you know, yeah. some tiny little, like these these type of, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, these type of. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. So, um, oh, it's just, a, it's just a not, it's just got to keep on upgrading everything, don't you, all the time? Um, well, I, I mean, that's. Anyway, that, that's that's why they get to build billion dollar headquarter complexes, right? Yeah. <laughs> in Southern California in Northern California, anyway. Yeah. No, it's, I, it's, yeah. So, uh you're really a well, t- tell everyone your Twitter handle because you're really a, very very active on Twitter and it's actually how I met you. Yeah, um, um at J O H N M I C H I E music. That's that's me. Um, I'm going to drop. I'm going to drop uh, all kinds of things in the link. So links to your Spotify, and that we'll discuss what to put in when when I when I release this, and so everyone can uh, listen to stuff and get in touch and all that kind of thing. Yeah, but um, uh, but but Twitter, what, what what are your feelings about Twitter? For I music? really like. It. I really like yeah. it. Yeah. It's um though I think that you lot across the, the pond let us down a bit because it seems to be all the the British that um have all the blogs and the radio stations and all of the the people that seem to be, you know, um at the other end of the scene. You know, all the the musicians seem to be global. Um, you know, like you know, you, um, Orange G, you know, you've got Gain genetic effects down in Hawaii, mm. Rebel Tramp in California. You've got um, people like Music Container in Germany. You know, all, all they're all over the place. You got um, and so on, so on. People in Japan, but um, like all of the like in your ears radio and all of these uh, places that seem to take music seem to be in, in the UK for some reason. And I've I, I've said to Orange G like, where where is the American equivalent of that scene that it must exist somewhere, but it doesn't appear to be. I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Um, uh, well, that's one of the reasons why I started doing this, right? Yeah. Is 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 really just to have a forum. I, I mean, I, I become interested in these kind of long form interviews and being able to take some time to talk about you know issues 
and um, and I wasn't really finding much. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not seeing a whole lot. And part of it is is like YouTube as an example is just terrible for music. Uh, you know, you have to be really you have to be really careful. Otherwise, they're going to strike things. It's like I've got another channel that I do, which is more travel related stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it's hilarious. I mean, I've had videos where I literally sourced music that should be copyright free. And I'm still I'm still getting claims on it. Mm. <laughs> you but know, it's, and, and it's nuts. You know, it's it, absolutely nuts. The, the, the tw Twitter is the best best forum for music. Yeah. Um, Instagram is difficult. Well, it's, it's just spam on there. It's adverts yeah. and spam. And yeah people that can't communicate in anything apart from pictures um and they're just trying to show look at look at they either want attention by saying look look at me all the time by doing selfies and they want people to go oh don't you look beautiful um or they want you know the, the, you're looking at their lunch and you're just thinking all oh, right okay but um you've got youtube which is pointless it doesn't pay any money it takes ages to get any subscriptions because they wipe that and the, the play counts off um tiktok's amazing mm -hmm. uh, i i'm not very I, I i would like to be more active on there but um the thing is i've got nothing to tell i'm you know I've, i'm sitting here watching the tv today because i'm i'm you know i'm, I'm not recording music it's yeah. like i can't do that for for well some people do but um you know, but Twitter's amazing because you've got the whole community on there and it's text based and you can talk to anyone and your reach is to anyone. Like for instance, like before we, we, we started recording this, you know, being able to actually talk to people at companies like Deezer and Tidal and force them hopefully to take positive action for you know, the music community. Um, you've got people like Robert Carlyle who though seems to ignore my music does seem to pay attention to some people on the internet seems you know and uh, yeah that's good that's all fair play they you know, it's good that you can communicate with these people yeah it's, um i do agree with elon musk in the sense that it is like a, it is like a town square and you can turn up there and you can say what you want and if people want to listen they can listen if they don't want to listen then that's up to them they can mute you they can block you or they can just never follow you it's completely up to them um it'll be interesting in the future where platforms like this supposed metaverse by the zucker whether that'll ever take off but i can see in the future it being like a, a twitter slash um tiktok platform where also you've got the integration of things that people like abra are doing with like the holographic performances mm -hmm. um and with the advancement of A&I, like artificial intelligence, us talking about isotope, these plugins, um, artificial intelligence will be able to um, support those type of networks. And I think, it will, I think it's very positive what will happen for the music community because I'll be some old git by the time it launches. You know, I'll be, I'll be looking like Rod Stewart. And um, AI will make me look like a, an 18-year-old in skinny jeans and... Simon yeah. Cowell might hire me then. To Unfortunately, though, it's just going to, you know, scan a picture from some record from you 30 years ago or whatever, yeah. uh, and I then and then have the algorithms write the music, <laughs> you know, and basically, basically pretend that, that to be you. Yeah, well, you know, well, and, and cut cut you out of the cut you out of the deal completely. Yeah, uh, you know, it, especially you look at you look at something like Spotify that, that we're both on, and the drive on the part of Spotify to turn everything into mood music is just frightening in a way. Yeah, I'm. I, I, I've got I've got mixed opinions on streaming platforms. I think that see, I, everyone slags off Spotify, um, and I actually don't mind it. I actually think it's a. a I actually think it's an incredible force because before you had Spotify, which you, you can get your free version of it, uh, it does kick out money, um, but you don't have to print CDs. You don't have to go around in the town centre handing them out for free or 
you, you're not reliant on record labels anymore. Yeah. Um, you don't have to because I'm not. You know, if you if a record label basically says, "How old are you? Oh, you're twenty. You're twenty three. You're too old." But we can't officially say that, and we're not interested in what your music sounds like. We're interested in your fan base, um, yeah. because that's the way that's what makes money. And then we're going to take complete control over your your what you do, and we're going to run you right into the ground and screw you for every penny you got and your fan base. Yeah. Now, I, I, I with. Platforms yeah, it's, like, back, it's back to the future. It's it's like yeah. it was it, it's like it was in the early sixties when, when yeah. you hear the stories of all these these bands. You know what and, I mean? And it's like pe- people on the internet. You see it all the time. Spotify only pays out zero point whatever p on uh, a song. And it, the issue isn't the amount it's paying. the The issue is the fact you haven't got a fan base. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's that's on you. It's not on the the company. You, you know. Um, this is why I've been so vocal about really hammering Deezer recently on the internet. It's because every single fraction of a penny adds up into that picture of mm-hmm. your, your to- and it builds up. Like you can earn some good money. Four thousand streams a day on Spotify is about five thousand dollars a year. And you know, if you can get that across Amazon, Apple, Tidal, um, YouTube, if you can get your publishing if you can get a physical format going, um, there's money in it and you can make yep. a living out of music. But the the, the hard point, point is the fan base and the ha- the hard point for working class people, the average man, the average Joe, the average woman, is what we were talking about earlier is the physical equipment. You, yep. know, you know, buying a buying a bloody bass guitar and microphone, it's not cheap. Not anymore. It's, um, I don't think it ever was really, but yeah. You know, like, I I can't make music because of soft hardware issues, and it's like you've you'll you'll find in that struggle as well. And we can't just we can't we can't ask mummy and daddy for the money. No, um, not anymore. I I think listen, I think that that's a, that's a big thing. The other issue that I think is is one that I'm starting to work on with a channel like this, and I'd like to build things out. Is I think there's an infrastructure that's missing in a sense, uh, because it's, I find it's very difficult to build out a fan base to get to that 4,000 streams a day, right? Uh, mm-hmm. No matter how good you are. I mean, occasionally there's always the exception that, that proves the rule, mm-hmm. but, but generally there's just so much out there and there's so few venues to actually, you know what I mean? have an idea of what other people are listening to in a sense, you know? Yeah. It, you know, like, like there isn't, I, I guess the, the best, the best example I'll give is I, I grew up, I was, I lived for a long time in Montreal, which is in Quebec and Quebec is sort of a funny part of Canada because it's French speaking. Uh, and it's sort of a country within a country. And the one thing that they've done extremely successfully uh, for such a small place, is they've literally built their own star system. And it's hmm. produced some world-class stars, you know. Right. Celine, Celine, Dion, Celine Dion, you know what I mean? She was a child star. You didn't like her music, hate her music, but she sold a hell of a lot of records. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, quite, quite you know? Sense, yeah, yeah and, and the hmm. reason why is that there is an actual system in place for a small little market where they actually do, you know, there's enough, sort of heat coming off that people get interested in things. And most, most people, that's the way they learn about music. You know what I mean? They're not learning about it, having some stream. You're you're not even paying attention half the time to what's playing on your screen. You know, you're not going to stop it to look at the name of the artist, right? Generally. Mm. So there, I, I think that there has to be some sort of infrastructure around like a, I don't know, top 10 indie hits or something like that where at least you hear what's coming out and, you know, or people, you know, what people will sort of agree on is, is of interest to people. Uh, how you do it is a whole other issue. But, but I think that that's, that's one of the things that's missing. The, the, well, the traditional route that you'd have a, anyone in the industry will say is you've got to perform live. You've got to do, yeah. do, you know, build, start local, build, you know, I don't perform live. Um, 
the internet and this is going back to the, we do have some of these things in place in the uk with like yeah. the top well, of the much range. more than here here it's all yeah. been sort of destroyed to, yeah. a, to a large degree um I, I i i sort of like believe in the kevin bacon effect the what is it the six degrees of kevin bacon in the sense yeah. that you know predominantly who listens to our music is people that either are in a band or um there's a few people that like following the music scene mm -hmm. on twitter like just general public um you know but the thing is, is you can you can turn one person's head, <clears throat> and that can change your career. Uh, so, so, for instance, I'm not saying he's the, the, the bloke, but for instance, there is Robert Carlyle who does his Saturday submissions thing now and again on on Twitter, where he goes, you know, submit your song, yeah, and if he likes it, it gets shoved on a playlist. But you you don't know who he's talking to, um, and so on and so on. There's a lot of uh, anonymity on the internet. And it's about slowly trying to build outwards. And Twitter's Twitter's a great platform. I've I, there's people that have found my music and that are fans that I wouldn't have found without it. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's a case of just word of mouth from that. The most important thing people can do is just talk about music, talk about the bands that they like, um, and hopefully that guy in the pub might write it down on their phone might might mm -hmm. listen to the album later tell his you know girlfriend about it and so on and she might tell her friends and then hopefully you get like a snowball effect the, the six degrees of kevin bacon but at the end of the day it's it's the song yeah if you if you don't write a good song no one's no one's going to care if they listen to it and if you write a um gangnam style track you can go big Yep. And no, the thing is, is no one knows what will make everyone will say, go and tour live, go and do this, go and do that, build your fam. No one knows what's going to make you famous. If the record labels knew what was going to make you famous, they'd be churning out Elvis every 30 seconds, and they're not, you know, they're, they're churning out Justin Bieber. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, I mean, and, and the, the other thing is, the world's changed. You, you know, when, when, when I was growing up, and I'm a few years older than you are. Uh, music was everything, you know what I mean? That was the TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, everything of its day, you know? But it's because there was nothing else, you know what I mean? Television was a few channels. There may have been one or two music shows on, right? I mean, you know, there were some in the UK, there was American bandstand here, and then MTV came, and that sort of changed things. But but there, there, it was a completely different world. I mean, you know, when I grew up, I, I remember saving my money and I'd go every Saturday to buy records. You yeah, know, kids have got too much money as well now. That's, and that's now now cool. there's no record. There are no records to buy in a sense, right? They've sort of made a comeback, you know, in as a niche product. But you don't have either the singles market that existed, the album market, and radio is no longer one. <laughs> You know, it's it's so tightly playlisted now, and it's half of it's all old stuff. So you're not you're not getting any new stuff, and the new stuff is all well written by three Swedes, right? You yeah. know, or it's rap. So yeah, which often which is deserves, also often deserves a C in front of it, but uh, that's yeah, a, you know, uh, I, some of it's good, yeah. but a lot of it a lot of it is is very formulaic. Simplistic. Yeah, well, the, 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 um, good rap, the good rap is the stuff that is. Well, the, the good rap is actually based on the original idea of what rap, rap music is, which, which yeah. is a uh, harken back to the African American um, phrasings and, you know, that, that type of thing. Uh, yeah. There's people that do it very well. No good on the internet does, does rap music very well in his hip hop y type, yeah. type way, but it is. There's a lot of rubbish out there, children. Yeah, well, but, but it, I mean, the other thing is, I, I mean, I'm really fascinated with the, like, I got really into the, the early history of hip hop. Mm. And it's quite fascinating what was going on, because it was like three or four things all at the same time that came and coalesced together, right? Mm. Uh, and had massive impacts. Uh, you know, sampling started through literally DJs, you know, 
finding that little piece of music and and manually with two turntables mm. <laughs> playing it over and over again and stuff like that right like in the earliest in these wild street parties that they had in the bronx which were you know something that came over from jamaicans who moved there and these crazy sound system wars that they had in jamaica mm. you know uh and where there were literally they, it was street parties right and and that was the first thing and then the toasters who were the mcs they started becoming the rappers and they were very influenced by the people who were doing the graffiti mm. because, because some of them were were very much the graffiti became more than just the tagging which was an interesting aspect of it which was sort of the star you know 15 minutes of fame type thing mm. but there were also a lot of them that were serious sort of poets you know and then they they sort of started rapping once that became bigger and you had the break dancing and it was all four things and they were all the same people doing it right mm. uh and it was they were all doing it very much well like the name of the show diy it was all diy you know and that's i think that was why it was so good as well because they had to be creative mm. they had no other choice you know they couldn't just plug it in and let the machines do all the work and let the, the three songwriters from from sweden write the songs for them which is what we have these days right yeah but it's... from the same four chords you know if you if you had that with like was it tim pan alley and stuff like that, didn't you and Broadway yeah. And, um yeah the thing is just though that's it is now but there's no saying that in 10 years time five years time that it, it will be like that because um the the spotify playlist which is uh, predominantly bot driven, though Spotify won't want the uh, people to know that. Um, that that's now. Um, we have had a revival on um, vinyl and the physical format, and I think coming CD. I know that is currently niche, but people can't predict where things are going to be in ten years' time, and I, I think this this playlist culture. Of and I think the record labels have been like pushing one song, get a song, get a playlist. Has to be you know like I think there's been a, a, a kickback against that, in the sense that um, you know people are starting to focus on albums now and yeah. EPs and the longer pieces of records. It's starting to go back into that early sort of like seventies period where people focused on you know an actual complete piece of work. I think that's starting to come through through for younger people. Um, you don't know. You, yeah. uh, you know th th these are all crazes, really. At the end of the day, it's um, we don't know. It's like downloading music. Everyone was downloading music about twenty years ago, and they were saying, "Oh, that's the death of music." And really, it was when you look at like streaming and stuff like that on Spotify. You think, well, what was wrong with it? Really, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I I just don't. It is the way it is now. But I, at the end of the day, I'm I'm quite hopeful about things because I, I think that's there's no there's no game plan at the end of the day. No one know, no one knows what's going to happen. And I think well that, that leaves a lot of opportunity for you to make what you think the future should be happen, and walk your own path. And if other people like it, they will follow. Mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you're 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 a lot more diligent on things like Twitter than I am, as an example. And and I, I saw recently you got your check mark, didn't you? Are, are you are you check mark? Uh, yeah, I'm ticked. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations. I mean, that's an achievement. It, it it's it's a nice thing because you you obviously you you put the work in. And it got, uh, you know, it got recognized, you know. Which I, I is fantastic. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why, why I got that, but. Um... Well, I think it's all algorithms as well, right? And they just look at who's following you, and is that, you know, is this when it's working properly? I mean, half the time they, they're giving them away for the wrong reasons, but I think in your case, what it was is they were looking and they saw, oh, there, there's someone that's the people that are following you 
yeah. are of interest enough that you're interesting. Well, it's, it's um, you've got, is what I what I would. To, you've got to have two pieces of news from mm -hmm. um, from the last six months, and you've got to have a decent website. That's the only three official okay things things that Spotify say or, or no Twitter says, um, and so many people have like if you if you went to the record industry, they would go. Have you ever discovered a band from their um, website, or have you ever went to a? When was the last time you went and looked at Fleetwood Mac's website? And the answer is like no one bloody ever goes. Ever would, yeah. Um, but I I deliberately made sure my website was looking good because I I thought it was about professionalism. It's about another thing that you should have done there. But I think I think Twitter take into account your. Um, footprint it is basically footprint yeah. on there and i spend all day on twitter so though yeah. I, i'm surprised i've not been um suspended for some of the things i've said on there or done because i i am a bit of a loud mouth some touch wood it doesn't happen but i am a bit of a loud mouth sometime on there yeah uh, whereas well, I've there's, seen... no, there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with that i no, mean what, what is it i've seen people do like something ridiculous like they've liked one too many posts and they've been thrown off for a week and i'm thinking well I've done worse than that on, That's on Twitter. You think they'd uh, want you to like more posts? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah I, 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 they probably thought they were bots. Would I've, be my I, guess. I, 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 I've, I've seen some some crazy got, stuff. Yeah, yeah someone, someone got thrown off there for saying something stupid at the end of a. It's like Luca. Luca has been banned off doing adverts on YouTube because he he's he, one of his taglines is "I've suffered for for my music." Um, now it's your turn, and he's been banned off doing adverts as if that's a threat. Like I'm gonna, you know, now you need to suffer, and it's not. Yeah, it's like, it's um, like when you when you think about. Uh, they, I don't know. I, I just. Don't well, know. no, I mean, I mean that. Listen, you know what that is? That that you're seeing the limits of ma machine intelligence. Yeah, because uh, the <laughs> algorithms are making that decision, and they obviously they, you know. The people that are programming them have no sense of irony. Mm. So why why would the devices, you know, why would the their their children even know what it is, right? Mm. And I think it's you know. So, yeah, I, so I've, got no, I've got no idea how I got that. So yeah, no that, that that one, but that one sounds like it was a complete. It was one of those automated decisions. I paid that some the algorithms just don't paid, understand, and then you know, yeah. paid some like in California. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, we, we let's not go there. I mean, listen, one of the reasons I, I've, you know, I like, I have to say, I like music Twitter is that it tends to stay focused on the music and leave a lot of the politics out, uh, which is a problem with a lot of the other areas of it, because that, that just ends up being a landmine. You know what I mean? The, the rules I use when I engage in Twitter is I don't talk about religion. I don't talk about politics. Rarely, if I do, it's if I do talk about politics it's because someone's asked me a specific, "What's your opinion on this?" Um, and I feel like, well, I'm, I'm not going to dance. I'm going to tell you my opinion, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Um, and I don't talk about sex because it's the, it's that sex, politics, and religion. You just don't. People people have opinions on that, and no matter what you say, you, you're going to offend someone. Yeah. You know. Um, you know, it's like I, I I said something about six months ago about I posted that picture of the the brunette out of ABBA and I just said, look, her haircut was ridiculous in the eighties, and someone went, oh, you're objectifying women, you know, oh, you know, just because she hasn't got you know big boobs, and I'm thinking, no, I'm just saying like everyone had a bad haircut in the eighties. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm yeah. not saying I wanna, I'm not yeah. saying I want to I want to sleep with her. No, no, know. but I mean that, that's how crazy it gets, though, right? It, it, it's literally look at me, but don't objectify me when you're doing it. Yeah. And it's sort of like, okay, you've, you've how got... is that supposed to happen? You know, we, we, we know who missed that science class in grade one. <laughs> yeah, well, you just got to. I just try and steer clear of those those things. Yeah. I'm, I'm I my original well, my degree is in uh, politics and international relations, and I did a, a master's in international relations, and I I am. Um, did actually spend a small stint working 
in Parliament for a political party, and I've been involved in in politics in the UK. So I'm I'm a highly political person, but you you won't hear my views publicly about yeah. Ukraine and and all these other issues unless someone actually specifically asks me because I'm, you know, I there are people even though we know the war is wrong and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to justify yep. it. There are, you know, there, there, there is one or two people on Twitter that are actually from Russia and I just feel so bad for them. And I don't, you don't know what they're being told. You, you, yeah, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, but if someone said to me, what, you know, what, what do you think of Putin? I'm going to say he's, he's an asshole. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that guy deserves to be, take, I, I personally have no problem taking him out and shooting him in the back of the head. But, um, I'm not going to vocalise that on a tweet in on Twitter because I know that these people probably don't know any better, and I, they're yeah. going to look at me and go, "Well, who are you to have that opinion?" And uh, you know, who am I to have that opinion? I'm. Yeah, well, it's like anyone else having an opinion, but unfortunately, Twitter isn't the you know isn't having the opinion in the pub or whatever, and and even then, you want to be on the same rule as it's with a dinner conversation, right? It's like like yesterday was Easter Sunday, and the amount yep. of people that were on the internet, musicians going, um, "Oh, it's a made up story," um, or you, you know, that's a fairy tale. It might well be. We don't know. I don't know. I I wasn't around two thousand years ago in the loincloth and sandals. Yeah, you know, that's your yep. opinion about it. I you know, and your 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 subjecting other people to your view as if that's the truth ah, and yeah. you're, you're offending people you, you know i'm not going to declare my my religious beliefs if i have any over you know yeah even, even in this interview because it's religion and spirituality and even atheism is in my opinion a personal opinion Agreed. There's, no, there's no reason you should be subjecting the whole world to that. i was just like cringing i was just like oh, I, yeah, well, yeah, but but listen, it was four years. It, it I think it started in the the past presidency, where even when you started a conversation by saying your personal opinion is, you know, that you know, let's say Trump is an, an idiot, but there was no but, <laughs> you yeah. know, and I think that that's the problem. There's no what's the point of even conversing when there's no con when there's no communication anymore, right? Because it's just. Uh, so, uh, you know, every, everyone's everyone. Trouble. Yeah, I, I could talk. I could talk. Uh, yeah. well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a whole other whole other thing. But let's uh, my opinion, I mean, my well, opinion. let's stick to music. That's, yeah, one, that's one of the golden rules I have about this one. Can I? Uh, and I think. Can I just? Can I just yeah. Anyway, um, anyway, talking talking about Twitter, I, 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 if I was you, I, I'd get more involved on it because I, I, I think it's a. You don't know who you're going to make connections with, and yeah. um, if wholeheartedly, like um, be before, you know, coronavirus and the lockdowns. If you'd asked me who my best mate was uh, beforehand, it'd be a different answer to now because my my best mates are on the internet and I talk to them daily. Um, you know, people at like Orange G, and I was very lucky enough to go over and. Um, see him like a, a you know a few weeks ago but yep. it's, it's changed my changed my life and there's some there's some br cracking people on there and no that's true it's like you you know you've you've got to know rebel tramp he's in california but there's there's so many good people on the internet um and um so much good music as well and it's just like i'll, I'll, I'll look around i think there's i think there's a section <clears throat> of people that see it as all competition um it isn't though yeah, there's one or two people. Yeah. I, I feel that there's a, um, oh, it is jealousy, really. They, they look at people's success. Uh, really? Or, I, no, I'm, I, th I think there is. I think they're, they're like, no, no, no. I, I wish I had that myself. Um, and um, I, I'm, I'm not going to mention their names, but I could, you know, I, privately I could tell you two people. You just like watch their accounts. They're hilarious. It's better than better than uh oh, so what, they're they're constantly following and unfollowing and no, blocking no, and it's, or are they yeah. actually trashing people no uh, i i would say that no. they are um God, i'm trying to think of the word it's not conceited i'm trying to think of the word um they're a bit self-obsessed and i feel that they 
I think I pick up the vibration that they are a bit resentful sometimes that they're not getting the traction that they feel that they, they deserve. Think they deserve. Yeah. And um, that spills out into their behavior on the internet. And I don't think they even know that they're doing it. <clears throat> but mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just sitting there thinking, it depends where you want to be in music, of course. I'm sitting there thinking, as a fan, if I was watching that, I wouldn't ever listen to your music. Um, yeah. People probably look at me on the internet and probably go, oh, well, I'd never want to listen to your music either because you're, a, you're slagging off Adele every five minutes or... You know, you're, you're saying you haven't been paid by Deezer, you know, but I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm genuinely not doing this for fans. I'm, I have a very strong interest in making money out of music, <clears throat> but I'm at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm making music because, um, you can't I'll, not make music. I like, yeah, you know, I like it. Yeah. I, it's, no, it's, it's something, it's a hobby. It's like needle craft to me or, yeah. um, some people have got a an allotment where they've got potatoes growing and carrots and yeah <clears throat> my my time is not in the garden it's with a guitar when it you know now and again and but um i do i do feel there's there's a few people in there that uh um i can't think of the word I need... no no I, well, I think you know you know what i think that what what i've noticed is that um and now I'm going to sound like a, an old guy, which I am, but I, I think that the current generation are the most unself-aware people I've ever dealt with. There's very little sort of self-reflection. Um, and it leads to things like that, <laughs> just thinking everything, you know what I mean? Taking everything too seriously, not having, you know, as, as, as you'd say in British, like having the piss taken out of you. Hmm. Because I, because I think that that really changes the way you deal with people, right? I mean, it puts everyone back in their place when they, they start getting, you know, a little too uh, self-assured. Mm. Uh, so although, although it's very important. If you have no self-assurance, you'll never be in music, yeah. you know, in a sense. You have to have a certain amount, but it, it's also good to have someone say, well, hold on a second, you know, uh, yeah. you know, like calm things down a bit. I'm very good at taking the piss out of myself. So, yeah, yeah. Well, but I think that's something you learn. That's a, it's it's when you you you're more mature and you have to be exposed to it too. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, I, I I'm sure this is going to you know, it it's going to affect like there's going to be people that will take it the wrong way. But I think that having having being bullied a bit is a good thing. Mm. You know, not not too much, not to to an extreme, but the the sort of taking the piss type of thing, which is a form of very light sort of social well, bullying, is a good thing. The, the British are very good at exactly. No, it's it, 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 in in I don't culturally, I don't know what it's like over there, but in in Britain, the the women are normally very oh hello how you you know oh you know oh you look you know, and then behind their back they're going oh didn't she look didn't she look bloody. Women are like that in this country. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like, like that everywhere. Bitchy. Yeah, bitchy. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, women. So I've objectified. You know, um, didn't mean to. But um, the men here are more likely to go, uh, "You look shit today," and then that's it. You know, they they men are quite. Um, men will say it to your fat. Well, at least my friends will. I've I've I I don't think I've ever been. Oh, I don't, well, I, this flew over my head if I ever have been bullied, but. Um, yeah. <clears throat> you call things what they are here in this country and I always have done with my mates I, I I will give my mates a hard time if I see something ridiculous but I you know yeah. I, I, no, but it's, it's, listen it's done in a lot it's done because you care for them you care well, about them it's, yeah, well, not done for, it's not done to, to hurt them there's right? one, one of my mates Steve who I I give him a hard time frequently but um yeah. There's, there's reasons for like he broke COVID lockdown rules, and I was like, you know, he's and then next minute he's slagging off Boris Johnson for having parties, and I'm going, well, hang on a minute, mate, you know, you're you're the one that was doing X, Y, and Z, you know, it's like yeah. you're exactly like this guy, what, you know, you and you're saying that he's not good enough to run the country. What about you? Would you be good? You know, and it goes on like that. But um, yeah, so. but the question is how how they react to that. Because, you know, in, and unfortunately, what I've found is years ago, people would have, would have 
said, okay, fine, you made a good point and readjust. But now people, people are just getting mad at you. Yeah, you know, exactly. we're pointing out the obvious, like, hey, you're being a hypocrite. Yeah, he, you know, he, it might be a good idea to, you know what I mean? Steve will find something that he will rip me about as well. Oh, it works both ways, but um, yeah, fair play. I love the guy, so you know, that's um, good. That's good. So, but, so uh, listen, before we uh, wrap it up, uh, tell tell me a little bit more about your uh, your crusade against uh, Deezer and and other streaming services that aren't uh, aren't yeah, aren't well, doing their duties to us. All right. Well, firstly, I'm going to say that I, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, YouTube. TikTok, they pay money, so I'm happy with them. But um, Deezer haven't been paying money, and um, last year I discovered that they were not recording plays and listeners correctly in the stats area. So they've been undercooking the plays. Also, they have not paid anyone that I talked to, and when I approached the help area, I went, there's an issue here, and they tried to start off from the perspective of, oh, it's just an isolated incident. It's just you. We'll see what's happening. And I went, no. And then I gave continual um, screenshots from people I'd collected information from. Um, and I went, here's another example. Here's another example. Here's another example. And I kept on like that, very forceful. And I also, all of their responses I put publicly onto Twitter saying, this is not good enough. You owe us money. And even if one player is 0 0.03 of a penny, you owe us that. Um, yeah. And it's they've admitted that it's en masse to me um, and that they're now resolving it. But this potentially could be millions of pounds globally um, mm -hmm. across unsighted. I mean, they're not touching the big boys. So supposedly they're now paying, but they won't give me answers to how large it is an issue. They're not giving me any answers to how they're resolving their stats area. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's horrendous. Yeah. Um, and one of the hardest things I've actually found is not going to them and saying, you're in the wrong here. One of the hardest things I've found is actually getting the community to just do what I need them to do, of just simply providing me basic information of when were you last paid by Deezer? Can I see that screenshot? Um, can you like this tweet to support it? Because the only way that we're going to change things is if someone does something about it. And I quite frankly got sick of people moaning about it continually to me in different chats. And I just thought, hang on, hang on a minute here. Until someone sticks their head up above the parapet and goes, this is not on, it's not going to be resolved. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was me. <clears throat> um, I, I don't know what's going on with Tidal. There's there's an issue there, but I don't know whether that I've got suspicion they're paying, but I've got suspicion that we're not seeing the payment. Well, that, that's the, yeah, that's the like, other issue, right? There's some there's some technical aspects that's going on here where we are getting the money. I some of us are anyway, but we're not seeing the reporting of it. And when the reporting does come through, it's lodged right at the bottom of the paperwork back months ago. Uh, just being put in as an afterthought. And when we look at the data, we look at the, the most, at what's at the top of the pile. So yeah, uh, I do have respect for Jason What's-His-Face, who's the artist manager relation for, label relations for Tidal, because he, he in the past he has spoken to me and talk to me though he's remained very quiet on this this issue about what's going on here and um all i'm yeah. asking for is are you paying us and can we have an artist stats area uh, to me that is simple can mm -hmm. we see our data you know um yeah. it's it's not rocket science but um yeah but but i mean listen that that's what one thing it would be nice to see more data just in general, you know, yeah. Yeah. in terms of music, because I mean, that's one thing I'll give you to is the analytics are insane. I've learned so much, like in the last month or two, it's my, what got me back, you know, uh, enthusiastic enough to do work 
uh, to do more work in the last little while is I, I was in Mexico on vacation, as you know, mm. and I ended up just shooting this silly little video on my bike, the bicycle I had just driving around the little town. And I, you know, had this little app that you could edit on my phone. So I quickly edited something. I threw it up and it went viral for me. You know what I mean? Compared to like the 10, 15 views you'd regularly get from your friends and relatives. Uh, you know, it's, I, I think it's at this point after a month or so, it's a couple thousand or thousand something. And I, which is great. No, for me, it was like with a, a channel with still very, very few subscribers, it was like a really viral thing. But what's nice about that is the next video I set out did very well. I dub more than doubled the subscribers on the channel. Um, and I had actual data to see, well, what, what works, what doesn't work, what do people like, you know, hmm. and, and it's helped in terms of saying, all right, I'm going to start doing streaming on, on the channel. I know I'm working on this, this Opus project, uh, which is called why I hate brutalism. Hmm. about brutalist architecture lots of it here lots oh i know there's it. lots of it here too <laughs> you know, there's, there's tons of it there's shit that, that still hasn't been torn down in the uk hmm. although you're well ahead of us in tearing tearing some of the worst monstrosities down oh, is berlin uh, berlin's interesting but, yeah uh, well I, but, well that, that listen i i spent 10 years in austria in vienna hmm. uh my ex-wife is viennese and um the difference between Austrian, the Austrians and the Germans, after the war, the Austrians, they completely rebuilt Vienna. Because mm -hmm. it was, I think, the third or the fourth most bombed city during World War II. So it was flattened, right? Mm -hmm. And today you'd go there and you would never know that there was anything that had happened, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas in Berlin, in Germany, at the end of the war, they didn't rebuild anything. They just built new. And unfortunately for them, the two styles at the time were the international, right? So mm -hmm. Bauhaus, basically, and brutalism. Mm -hmm. And I mean, those, you know, those are just two different, I mean, it's sleek nihilism or nihilism plus, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, which, which is brutalism, right? And, and anyway. Uh, so, you know, it, it, just to get back to my story, that it was really the thing that got me into doing this big video about this. And now I'm, I'm looking into it and hopefully I won't have any copyright issues. But I found all these interviews from the, the actual architects and themselves talking about it. And it's, it's fascinating to, to hear the things that they, they say, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and the justifications for the, for the architecture. Uh, and you know how they how they envisioned it compared to what the results were, like mm. like especially the, the what were they called the Smithsons? Have you ever yeah. seen any video of those the, the two of them? No, I haven't. No, no. Well, they were the, the Robin Hood Gardens. Mm -hmm. it was probably their most famous uh, building uh, in in London. It's been to they tore it down. It was a, a brutalist apartment complex, one of the, the social housing. Yeah, uh, and well, a lot of the problem was a lot of them were slapped up and they weren't structurally sound. That was one of the issues. Well, it was one of the issues. The the other issue is that they they destroyed communities to save them. Yeah, is probably the best way to to put it. And but but some of the like, well, I, I'll I'll send you the link when I finally release the video when I'm finally done with it. But there's a, there's a couple of comments and it's just like it's eye opening. It's 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 sort of like. You know, the, why why are these peasants not doing what we want them to? <laughs> it's like every single class division in England comes out in their thinking versus the, you know, the people who had to live in the results of their their thinking, right? Yeah. Or or the or the other one is like the the guy who the the British architect British Italian architect who did the Pompidou Center. Uh, and. Yeah, that was built like in the 1960s, right? It was right around like just before the the, the, the revolt, the, the the riots in Paris in 1968. Hmm. And the thing is, they were you know they were revolutionaries. They were, they thought themselves as revolutionaries, right? You know, and they were they were you know reaching the the new new utopia through their their architecture. And anyway, 
Yeah. Sort of fa- fascinating, fascinating stuff. Um, anyway, let's, let's wrap this up. We should do it again. Uh, I think it might be fun to get together and, uh, and discuss favorite records or something like that. Sort of come, come with a list and, and, and do, you know, something. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss it. But, uh, Crimes would be in there. Yeah, well, you know, something, something like that. Uh, I, I'm also going to hit you, hit you up to to see about getting uh, getting some more recommendations for for future guests. I know Orange G, we've agreed we're we're setting up something up. I think I'm going to reach out he's, to. He's lovely. He's yeah, lovely. no, I, I'm looking. I'm looking. He, he was totally into it, and I think we're going to try to do something on Thursday. I don't know when it's going to when it's going to come out. Just like with you, I haven't decided what day I'm going to release this. I think I'm going to try to do one a week, basically. Uh, try and edit the cats out of it. Okay. Well, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Yeah. I'll leave. I, I got. I'll, I'll probably edit down when we when we both took our our uh, our washroom break. Yeah. At the same time, but aside from that, the cats are fine. Like, like I said, I, I've seen YouTubers. They literally bought cats because it seems to to the the algorithm seems to like cat, cats in the video. Like there's that. probably a line somewhere, you know, from well, from when cat videos were so, so popular, right? Uh, so yes, uh, she's the show. Yes, so much of a star at the moment, is she? She's no, 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 no. Like, like for for the next one, you're gonna have to move in one of those cat rack things or something like that, back up in the corner. Or... <laughs> yeah, she's uh, one of them killed something yesterday or this morning. I, I, I think it's what two, they do. Two, yeah, well, it's just like. I don't, I don't mind it, but it's yeah. when it's the birds, I'm like a bit like, what? Well, yeah. Just leave them alone, you know. Um, but they've, this one's a murderer. She's anything smaller than her. It's, no, no, they're, you know. Anything, they, yeah, look, if I was small, she'd have me, definitely. Mm-hmm. But because I'm bigger, she's like, oh, I love you. But um, she's probably, she's probably <laughs> at the moment dreaming about my death and about all the money that she'll inherit when she and all the cat food she'll have when I'm gone. Nah, knowing it's a cat, it would pro- probably be more the, the the joy she would find in the hours of torture up to the death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slinging me around the room, playing around, and you know, I probably but, deserve uh, it to be fair. But um, yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, is what it is, isn't it? But, exactly, uh, they are what they are. They're yeah. they're they're little lions. I, you can, know. I can't I can't stand dogs personally. I don't really. Well. I, I would think where where you are out in the country, a dog would be perfect because it would force you to go out on walks twice a day. Well, I, 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 I don't like dogs and I don't like dog owners. But, well, okay. some, some dog owners. Some dog owners. Um, the, the dog owners that go to the beach and they get their little bag, their plastic bag, and they pick up the dog muck and then they just leave the plastic bag with the dog muck on it. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's like, well, just leave it there. Why, why are you putting it in a in a bag in the first place, you know. Um, yeah, so, yeah there's, there's someone else to pick up. Yeah, no, that that at least here, I mean, there was a an explosion of the number of people with dogs over over the whole lockdowns here. Mm-hmm. It's probably the dog population of at least the downtown of Toronto probably doubled. Yeah, it's, it's uh, um, but at least at least here, most people pick up after their dogs. They they smell as well. It's like I've not met a dog yet where I've not petted it and smelt my hand and went. You, I now smell a dog. Like it's yeah. not, with, with a cat, they don't smell. I've got two of them, and my you know my house doesn't doesn't smell of. Yeah, well, because you can you can let them out. Um, but <laughs> dogs just, and you've got to walk them all the time. It's like you know um, yeah. with a cat, you just sling them out and they they do their business. Yeah, but see, there, there's your forty pounds right there. If you yeah, but, if you had a dog, if you had a dog and you had to walk them two three times a day, you never would have gained the weight. True, but at least I'm, at least I'm sitting there with my my can of beer, thinking that my cat's doing her business in my next door neighbor's garden. She's not doing it in my garden; she's doing it next door. So you know, she's keeping my garden all right. She's keeping yeah. all the other cats away from pooing in my garden. True, you know? true. So yeah, so so what, one last question actually. Uh, yeah. You you recently relocated up north, yeah, in England. Five, where were you? Where were you before? Um, well, um, I've spent. Let me think. I've, I've probably spent about twenty years of my thirty. Oh, 
I think I'm 36. I don't know what I'm, I'm either 36 or 37 now. I was born in 85. I've got a birthday in November, so I, I, I'm. Yeah. Right. All of Even us that. need to ta- all of us need to take two years off of that because of COVID. That's true. So, so um, yeah. So I, I spent I don't know 20 odd years living in East Anglia, um, in various places, Norwich. Pardon me. A place called Atalborough. Um, place called uh, Watton, mm-hmm. um, but predominantly in Norwich. Everyone there's got web feet and um, are a bit inbred, and um, very weird. If you ever watch Alan Partridge, they're all like that. Okay. Um, yeah, they're, they're just weird. I never liked it there. Um, there's nothing to see there. They all go. Oh, it's so beautiful here, and it's flat. There's no. There's there's no hills. Uh, it's just fields of just fields. You know, there's not there's yep. not even animals in the fields. It's just oh, is is another field, and they go, oh, it's so beautiful. Like you go to the beach, and they go, oh, it's a beautiful beach. The beach is falling into the sea. You know, there's just erosion everywhere. Um, they're weird people. So, I hated the place. There's no reason that anyone goes there either. There's no. It's just oh. Uh, and I've also lived in London um, about I don't know six seven years. I, I don't know how long I spent in London, but I was. By the time I left London, at various places in London as well, out near Heathrow Airport, um, in Tooting, um, Clapham Junction. By the time I left London, I was sick of the place because um, unless you're earning big money, you can't enjoy it. Yeah. Because it's so expensive and you don't know anyone. But at the same time, you're never more than about 20 foot from anyone who you don't know. Um, it's polluted, it's dirty, there's rats everywhere. Um, and though there's a lot to see in London, I think it is probably the best capital city in the world. I've, I've traveled a lot. Um, it's better than New York, in my opinion, because of the history, the buildings, mm-hmm. the architecture, yeah. um, the diversity of the communities that live there, um, the transport network. All of it is fantastic in London. Um, you get to the stage where you just realise it's just a tourist destination for me. Yeah. yeah. And once you've seen Buckingham Palace and Big Ben and the BT Tower and whatever X amount of times, I was thinking, well, you know, I've been around the country. Liverpool's a better city. Cornwall's more prettier than this. I just, I just got to the stage of thinking, like, my life is in a rut with my job because I was doing teaching. Uh, I wasn't enjoying teaching either, really. Um, overwork. Um, just wasn't enjoying anything. I wasn't making music. I just felt I'd, I'd tried to do the sensible thing in life um, of you get a job, you work, you do this, you do that. Um, and I wasn't happy. Um, and I got to the stage of thinking, it doesn't need to be like this. Uh, what do I actually want to do in life? I'd like to make music. Where do I actually want to live on this planet? Well, I'd like to live in the north of England because my mum's from this part of the country. Uh, my dad is from Scotland. And ever since I was a kid, I'd always went on holiday to Northumberland at one, you know, it'd be one of the holidays we'd go back up and see my mum's uh, wiser family. And I just thought, you know, I, I really like Morpeth um, and the northeast. There are family ties here i just thought well screw it move up there it's cheaper up there you know just do it like um why why am i spending a a single second longer of my life not happy just get on with it um hallelujah and it's honestly it's the best decision to make but then there was the lockdowns where it was like well but i'd rather be here because here, I, at least I can walk. So there's a field just over there. I can walk around that. There's more. There's woodland around here. Yeah. If I was still living in London, people wanted to leave that city during lockdown because they yeah. they were stuck in like a little box, which was their house, yeah. and being paying like I don't know a million, you know, thousand pounds a month or whatever to be in a box. In East Anglia, it's all f- farmers' fields, and they there's nowhere to walk there, and you're not seeing anything. I'm I'm seeing another field, but here. At least I, during the lockdowns, I could walk to, you know, out into the country. I could walk into the woods. I could see hills. I could, you know, mm-hmm. um, 
but it's the best thing I've done. I don't know whether I'm going to be here all my life. Um, I'm going to be here for the foreseeable future, but if I made a lot of money on Bitcoin or whatever, uh, or <clears throat> people who watched this video went out and bought my record in droves and started streaming <laughs> me, you know, um, I don't know where I'd live. I, I probably would go to a Scottish island and where it was really, you know, somewhere like the um, Isle of Mole or mm -hmm. Isle of Sky or Shetland. And I'd have a, if I had a lot of money, I'd probably run a little farm, if honest. Yep. And I probably wouldn't even do music, if honest. I'd probably, I'd probably be happy just growing my own food, if mm -hmm. I could do that. Um, yeah, it, 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 sounds, it sounds similar to what I want to do, you know, trying to get out to Mexico, which is sort of what what hit me with the same thing, just with better weather. You've, if my advice is just do it. I well, that, I, I'm 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 working I'm working towards it. Yeah, know? just just um, I would I jump two feet into it, and um, you'll spend the first year going, do I really live here? Is this really home? Yeah, and then after a while, you go, why didn't I do this sooner? Yeah, well, I mean, part of the biggest thing is with with COVID, it's got more complicated than it was before. Uh, you know, uh, it's changing countries, which is different than moving within the country. Mm. Although the, with the experience here in Canada, it's I, I, I'm I'm sure we're going to lock down again come fall. I honestly think we might do here as well. Because... It's it's just too easy for the politicians to paper over. But we said we were going to do politics, so let's not do politics. <laughs> so so did were you ever in bands before, or, or uh, musically did you just pick it up uh, well, when you decided you wanted to take it up as a hobby? Well, I wish wish you were dead. It's the first song I ever wrote when I first got a guitar when I was um, fifteen. 16 stuff like that mm -hmm. and i've been writing songs i've still got songs i've not even recorded they're still in my head yeah um and i spent most of my life wanting to be in a band right but i was surrounded by like one of my mates chambo steve Ch chamberlain he's one of, he's one of the best guitarists he's like a tommy emmanuel he's fantastic he makes clapton look like a bloody trumpet player or something you know like ridiculous mm -hmm. he's, he's that good um he, he's got no interest in being in a band he just likes playing guitar and just wanted to go and do a job and he just picks up guitar and noodles for like hours but um i didn't know a drummer so no one's particularly musical that i knew and then when i went to university i took my guitar down there thinking oh, i'm going to join a band can it you know and there was the guy next door had a bass but never played it, and um, there was a guy ne the other side of me who studied music. Yeah, but play he played flute, and um, he you didn't want to do just rock tall covers well, for the rest of your life. So good, well, good move. Between well, also between me and the the World Wide Web, he's an asshole, and I don't mind. <laughs> but, um, okay. There was another guy next to me who's uh, played piano and is. Um, name is Chris, but he studied physics and we all know what physics students are like. They like wear cardigans and they're not cool. And yeah, 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 yeah. He would it never work out. It's just like, um, yeah, you just, yeah, you just, unless you're doing like Sparks music or something, it's just, and he's not even cool enough to do Sparks, you know, it's like, um, yeah, so yeah. it didn't happen. So I just spent the whole of my university getting drunk and having fun and yeah. doing politics. And then after that, it was, straight into the world of work and then you get a girlfriend and you do all these other things and you just think you end up getting so much responsibility that spending your friday and saturday night i can't drive either you know doing band practice in milton Keynes or somewhere it's just not going to happen yeah. i'm not going to be driving 100 miles at four o'clock in the 100 miles down the road yeah. at four o'clock in the morning so and then i did teaching and it just got to the stage where my life had gone so far down one road where mm -hmm. um, it was either I'd do it myself, yeah, all, all of it, or it's never going to happen. And now, yeah. now I get people go, well, do you want to perform? Would you perform live? And it's like, well, if I did that, I'd have to form a band, yeah, which I could do, 
Well, listen, what, what I would what I would say to you and I'll make I'll uh, I'll make a suggestion is I was I, I came at things in the opposite direction as you in the sense that I was a singer in a couple of different bands. So I've had that experience. And then I hit a point where I didn't want to work with anyone. Right. And I wanted to sort of pursue my own vision. So I did that like you. I learned and sort of did all the struggles that you do when you try to figure out how to become an arranger and a producer and everything else around songwriting. Uh, and I knew I'd achieved it when I started treating myself as, oh, that fucking singer. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? And then the, the singer was just off on the side and I'd have him in every once in a while when I was working on a song to sing. Uh, but what I will, what I will tell you is both performance and rehearsals are very different beasts Mm. from working in the studio. And they're both fantastic experiences, especially playing live. It's the adrenaline from that, from like nailing it at a show is the best drug, which is why all the big rock stars became addicts. Yeah. But it was literally from that. It's like when. I, th- I think about it um, yeah. because I don't, yeah, I could do it. I could form a band, yeah. you know, put, put the, you know, get, get local and I could, but the way I look at it personally is I've, I've got no interest in that um, yeah. because I'd be spending so much time rehearsing and then doing these gigs. And that would be taking me away from what I actually like doing, which is just sitting in front of a computer. And my, honest love of the music business is probably um production which is my own stuff you yep. know um yeah. and probably record label stuff like what i'm doing on the internet with Deezer is just like chasing bloody money down and going like you know i i, I probably if if i wished forward to like you know get a bit older i probably will potentially manage a band and start mm. a record label when I've when I've done my bit, I can Mike on Mike and Five on the internet, I can see why he he does it because I I personally would I can see the kick out of that. It's not about me and my music and trying to perform it and make a fan base. The bit I like about you know music is I like the process of making the music myself yep. and learning that and getting really good at that. But I really love the industry part of things in terms of. Um, finding where the money is and going after it and squeezing the pennies out of it and i think if i in the future if i you know if there was an act that came along where i thought wow i could do something for you i would be happy doing all the promotion for that band Mm -hmm. um, sending the emails off getting the radio play and that's the bit i love like when i was making when i made my album high vibrations every single college radio station in the united states got an email from me saying this is my album now it was yeah. during the the lockdown pandemic that you had over there, so the only place that responded to me was like bloody Hawaii. But um, you know, I, I didn't mind pinging off two hundred emails a day, and that was yeah. every, every day for quite a while. Two, yeah, one to two months, I was pinging off like two hundred emails a day happily, mm-hmm. uh, whilst being on Twitter, and um, so. But mind you, if if um, Universal rolls up outside with a Rolls Royce and goes, here's a massive checkbook in the Black American Express. We're signing you. Um, and, you know, we, we'll, we're we going to get in, I don't know, I don't know, bloody you know, Elton John to play piano for you. Mm-hmm. And you, you can mime on stage and wear skinny jeans and you're going to get X amount of money. I'll probably do it. Yeah, you know? yeah but, fair, fair enough. But, I mean, I, I just I just thought the experience myself the experience of being in a band was a very good one and what what always struck me is it's a very different you know what i mean every aspect is different and has its positives and negatives mm-hmm. what, you know is, including what? rehearsal rehearsal is a great you know i i learned so much that helped me in writing songs from actually being in a band and writing and rehearsing songs mm. Because it, it, there's a similarity there because you're, you know, and I, I was always the one in the bands or oftentimes the leader was the, the strict one. And, you know, here's the 10 songs and every rehearsal, we rehearse those 10 songs until we're happy with them and then we can play live. Type yeah. thing. 
Well, see, and, I, and, well, and got a kick out of doing it, right? Where is the fan leader role? If and then li and, and live, even if you're playing in front of 10 people, when you're sounding good and you get completely into it, it it's one of the greatest experiences of, of life. It's, it's better than sex. So, well, it's like there's a couple of bands, local bands around here that are on Twitter that have started performing live and I've went out and yeah, I've good. spent me eight, eight quid on a ticket and I've gone out and seen them. And I'm, for the ones that are good, I'm mm -hmm. actually either, I actually go to the back and I actually yeah. start talking to the mix guy who's got the console going, what are they doing? What are they, you know, what what's that vocal effect? You know, what, what mm -hmm. boss effects unit have they got? The You know, is that reverb yeah. thingy? I'm not paying any attention to what they're doing on stage. I'm trying to, I'm, I've, I've got the sound engineer head on and I'm, so like my, my experiences of live music, I saw Paul Weller last night. Yeah. And I was um, thinking more about the, um, acoustics of the place than the performance, and it's just like I I don't think I'm a performer. I, I think I'm. Nope. <laughs> I, think I, I, I can see why. Honestly, I can see why people like uh, Brian Eno remove themselves from that situation of live music, and I can see why they yeah. then become hermits in the studio because um, that is my inclinations. Is I I want to learn more about how that sounds made or. Um, you know what what's doing that that's that's the bit yeah. that interests me with music so yeah. but um it might happen one day i've been struck by um when i've been watching these bands some of them some of them brilliant like you know fair you know they're going to do really well they will mm. do really well but there's been one or two where i've been thinking i could do better than that but um you know no one said here's the acoustic guitar john get up on stage and then i'm going yeah. I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember the words can't, i can't i see i don't know any of the words to my songs yeah, yeah. Well, see, that, that's where that's where the rehearsal comes in, right? And I don't know any of the yeah because when I make when I make a song, I play like a bit on the guitar, and then I'm looking at it on a computer screen for about a month, doing all this other stuff. So by the time I've it's yeah. finished, I can't remember what key it's in or anything because yeah, it's, yeah, no, I, it's, it's, it's just um, it's not. I don't work in a linear way. I'm doing. I'm tinkering. This is why I need the computer because I, I'm I'm tinkering around on little bits, and you know that's I can't do that anymore. So, but that's that's the bit I like. I like tink I like tinkering and I like the sound. Yeah. Um, but no. you know, I, I personally I don't I don't think I look like a a rock star either. I think I'm gonna look, I'll just look like this hairy bloke who looks a bit pissed up and a bit tired on stage. With cat hair down him and a few beans stains from my breakfast or something, yeah. and I'm going like, oh yeah, listen to me. But um, well, you, you you're just going to have to time it right. Well, there's going to be <laughs> breaks know, for it one because day. I mean, in the grunge era, if you could get slip into the skinny jeans, put on a lumber jacket, you would have been fine. I've I've got just got to find a really fat man, and I've got to go into his wardrobe, and I've got to wear his suit and look like Justin Bieber. That's what I've that's what I've got to do to become famous. It's, um, but um. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it might be for me one day, but um, I talk yeah. to people like, um, is it like Chris James Willows? He's done that. He's he's toured, and he's just happy with his life in a house with his family, and he loves yeah. music. He loves making it, and he's he's very talented, and he should he should be famous. But at the end of the day, I'm I can understand that because I'm very happy where I am. I wouldn't want to move down to London now and yeah. do that and have to be at these parties with Kate Moss and going, I actually, you know, pretending I find it interesting that you wear size six trainers. I'm not going to be interested in that. Yeah. You know, and making small talk with, um, you know, whoever, Adele. Like, you know, do I really want to be doing that with my life and staying up to two in the morning and having a... Every night. And yeah. I, yeah, and seeing this guy's gaff, Bono's gaff or... The bass player out of U two and seeing a swimming pool in the basement, I, it just doesn't interest me. I'd rather watch TV and have a drink down the pub, but you know. Yep. Anyway, I can, John, I can rattle on as you can tell. No, 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 it's good. We, we'll we'll do it again. Uh, let, let's let's discuss <laughs> off offline uh, what 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 we do because I, I'd I'd love to actually just decide on an album and sit and we'll we'll talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. That's, you know, like a you know, like. 
choose one of Brian Eno's old records or my favorite record of all time, uh, mm -hmm. Roxy Music, which I think is just, you know, a work of absolute genius. Um, mm. uh, because, because of what it was, right? Uh, but anyway, that, that's for another time. <laughs> and you can have, what would be nice is one that I like and you dislike or the other way around so we can have a, a big discussion about it or bring well, other I'll, people in. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll dig out a Grimes record. Uh, yeah, let's, just, uh, I'll, I'll have to listen to it. I, I have lot, I, my, my biggest issue is I, I listen to very, very little music that's not mine. Hmm. It's just I get so focused on my own stuff that that's, that's, I don't really listen to anything anymore. No, it's, it's the same with me though. With like when you make music, you just listen to your own stuff again and again and again. And yeah, and I'm too tired I, to listen to anything, you know, I, unless I, it really catches my ear. And very little's caught my ear for years. And by by the time um, by the time you I, I release a record, anyway, I'm sick. I'm sick to the teeth. Of it. I've still got to go. Yeah, let's love it. It's amazing. Like you know, I'm just thinking like it's, it's, it's rubbish. Like why you why you you know, it's just um. I don't well, know. That, that's why but, that's why I think you need someone to do the promotion for you. But, no, but I, I find at the end of it, you're just so exhausted well, from the I, whole process. The last thing you want to do is pr promote the record that you hate. Well, this, point, the, right? the, thing, the thing is, is like this is another reason why I want, wouldn't want to do touring is because I would have made this record, and I'd be like, I'm literally banging my head up against the wall, going, "I hate this." You like, oh. yeah. and um, and then I'd have to go and tour it around the country and, year, sing, yeah. and sing it every night. And I'm just like, I, I can't think of anything more boring than doing that. And I know like you, oh, the crowd is singing it back to you and uh, all them, that, you know, um, the bassist might be cool and he might smoke a bit of weed. Uh, we might, you know, it might get a chance to do that, you know, beforehand. Uh, you know, or, you know, there might be girls there or something. Yeah. It does. It doesn't interest me. Um, I, I can't think of any. I'd rather be watching someone else play music and getting drunk. I'd rather get drunk, if honest. You know, give, give me give me a few whiskeys. That's me away. I'm having a great <laughs> time then. I'm flying. So very yeah. good. Anyway, th thanks so much. That's uh, all right. Let's definitely do it again, and uh, we'll continue talking. And uh, hopefully, at some point, we'll uh, have a chance to. Do, do a stream at a little bit more of a civilized hour for me and we can share drinks. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll, drink, I'll drink at your time if, uh, if I had the Yeah, well, ex exactly. Well, it'd be more a late afternoon for me, evening for you, and then it'll all work out fine. But yeah. I, I, I think <clears throat> trying it, what is it, 9 a.m. when we started, my time is a little bit too early for me. 12 o'clock is when you can start drinking. That's the... Uh, yeah, my rule is usually around 5, but I'll, well, I'll break it once in a while. I'll tell you a story before we go. Um, sure. When I was at uni, I thought it would be a good idea to have some cornflakes, but instead of putting milk on it, putting lager on it. So I was like eating the cornflakes. Like, don't try it, children. It's uh, it's not a good idea. It tastes horrible. So, But I had, to, I had to eat this whole bowl of cornflakes with lager across it. And, it and was, it, was it at least cold? Yeah, it was cold lager, but um, okay. uh, but the, the like irony taste, it just made it taste of iron. It's like try it. I try it once. No. Uh, <laughs> I don't uh, I don't I don't eat cereal anymore. Uh, hmm. I, I saw a documentary, I don't know if it's true or false, but I saw a documentary supposedly at some point back in the seventies, someone had done a study and uh, they fed half of the lab rats cereal i don't know cornflakes whatever and they they fed the other half of the rats the packaging the box yeah guess which rats survived the ones who ate the cardboard boxes it, it doesn't it is well, uh, doesn't surprise me <laughs> and, and since then i don't think i've ever ate, ate any cereal outside of like a muesli I, 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 I don't eat meal. i'm normally like a toast guy if i'm gonna okay. Um, if but I, I I did have cereal yesterday with a banana across it, but um I've it's like it's gonna be shreddies if I if I do have if I do have any cereal but um yeah I'm normally a toast or a, a fried breakfast type person if I'm if I'm gonna eat but yeah I'm not it doesn't surprise anything processed is just terrible for you yeah, yeah that, that that was really one of the big things with me to lose weight is I just as little processed food as possible it's everywhere. Like, yeah, um, I know. it's hard. My, it's hard to get away from. My mate Steve, going back to him, the the guy I rib, that's all he eats is processed foods. Um, 
it, like it won't eat anything natural that's grown out of the ground. Like if you if you bought a hamburger for him, he'd be pulling out the salad, and he'd be going, "Oh, it it causes indigestion. I can't eat it." And it's like oh, crying out loud, mate. Like, yeah. How do you live? It isn't that that's causing the indigestion. <laughs> no, it's just it's it's probably your body saying we it's doing something good to you. That uh, exactly. Yeah, but um. Yeah, he's it, like you take him to have an Indian. He'll eat the Indian, and he'll have pilau rice, which is onion rice. That's what pilau yeah. rice is. But then he'll go in the next breath. Oh, I can't eat onion; it gives me indigestion. And I'm just thinking, well, you're just eating pilau rice for crying out loud. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I know a few people like that too. He I mean, all it. you can do is just shake your head and say, "Of course, that's fine." Yeah, he, he deserves it. That's all. I, that's that's why that's why he gets ribbed because it's well, just ridiculous. Go. So. Um, thank yeah, you I love, again i love you steve <laughs> <laughs> anyway thanks a lot and uh let, let's do this again soon yeah thank you for the opportunity Mark. oh no thank it was it was th thank thank you for being my first guest and uh help, helping me kick kick off this whole uh whole adventure yep all right i'll speak to you, you soon talk to you soon bye, -bye.